Hey, my friend. I'm going to talk about tall poppy syndrome. Also, hero's journey that I like to call the hero's adventure. And why? It can be so difficult to have people around us who sometimes criticise us, hold us back, want to sow those negative seeds, which I call tall poppy syndrome. I think you'll find it really interesting. I hope you do. So just come with me, if you would, to muse about being on the right path and enjoying every moment to live a life that has few regrets. If that's of interest, important to you, please follow after this. Hey, this is the Personal Development Unplugged podcast where we use hypnosis. Yeah, hypnosis. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Don't worry what it is. It's just a mass of processes that we're going to get you to change. Change to let go of anxiety, low self-esteem, and create massive, massive supreme inner confidence. But that's confidence in your competence and competence in your confidence, which means you can do anything and be, well, be safe to enjoy. Enjoy the world as it should be with you at the helm, creating the life that you want. That's what this podcast is about, you and being the best you you could be, singing from your real voice, aligned with your mission, aligned with your passions. That's what it's about. So if you're interested in letting go of anxiety, if you're interested in letting go of fear, guilt, all those blooming syndromes, imposter syndromes, and every little bit of the mind which is negative, then have a listen here because we've got some wonderful processes and lots of good conversations with between you and me to get us both thinking in such wonderful ways. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Just take the trance to have a, have a listen. This is Personal Development Unplugged with Paul Clough. In simplicity, there is genius. In simplicity, there is genius. Hey, my friends, we're back. A longer podcast. It's a weird thing. So many people talk about the hero's journey. Joseph Campbell. And I think there are so many film stories that all generated from that concept, I guess, of leaving home, doing something for you, overcoming struggles, maybe temptations, limiting beliefs, all the things that will knock you off your path, and then coming home. And that can be the most difficult, most difficult part of that adventure, not journey. I think it's an adventure because when you come home, you're different. I always tell my clients, when you finish working with me, that is, you will be a different person. And you're going to educate, as it were, the people around you with your differences. But the thing is, there'll be good differences, so they're going to welcome it. But you're doing it for yourself. You see, there's this thing called tall poppy syndrome. What's that? Well, if you can imagine a wonderful field out there in the distance and you're looking out on that field and it's just a field full of poppies. I know poppies are normally red with those wonderful black markings and you see them all together and as the breeze or the wind will move, they all move like a sea of poppies. But there'll be one just sticking above the rest, just like taking its own path, growing, growing in itself. But then you find what happens is the others around it begin to entwine it, to pull it back, to bring it back to their size, their, maybe their community as it were. And I think that's what happens sometimes when we're on our path, our, our hero's journey, our hero's adventure. You see, when we start 
on this journey of personal development. And I think we start it before we know we've started it. It's only when we're into it that we realize what we're doing. And we're, you're here with, I know, the intention of creating the life that will give you the most wonderful pleasure, give you joy, and be able to share that joy. Because I know you're that type of person. That selfless service, even if you don't say it out loud, I know inside that's who you are. Dreams are for you, but those dreams will impact on others in a wonderful way. I want to support that. But the thing is, when we start out on that path and we realize it, people around us can be like those other poppies. And even to the extent they may just give those little comments, like, you're not, you're not that type of person. Why are you doing it? Oh, that's so silly. You know, who do you think you are to be able to do this? Why, why, why? And I think sometimes when we take a stance to try to explain ourselves, it can be like they're really good hypnotists and they can reframe and put us into different different states, which are just helpful because there's a reason for why they're doing it. We're going to go into this later. But I think that's what happens, you know. We have the comments, whether it's to our face or what we hear or even just that feeling, that connection we have with others, the look. That can be hard, can't it? Because you do get that feeling. I'm I'm leaving. I'm leaving to do something for me. So, then what happens? We're on our hero's journey, because we've, we've actually battled through that, haven't we? We're on our way. It's exciting. I'm learning new things. How many new things have you learned? I know I have learned a myriad of things. And I know there's things I don't, I forget. I don't know whether I'm doing. I often question myself. Am I still doing the things I learned? Which I know I'm good at. I think I must be. I just don't. I just don't notice it at the time. It becomes an automatic habit of, of just being me, the me I like. But the thing is, as we go on, we might get those little snipes, you know, those little, little just jibes, jabs at us, the words that people say. Because in some ways, you're leaving people behind, aren't you? Or that is their perspective. You're leaving me. I think that's what comes from, from that. They're thinking, you're leaving me. And I don't like that feeling. And you see, sometimes they want to hold you back. And they'll... Have you ever had that feeling of guilt? The guilt that you're doing something for yourself? How crazy is that? I'm being selfish, trying to make myself a better person. Now, when you say it like that, that is crazy, isn't it? And... I'm going to tell you now, and I've told you so many times before in other, other podcast episodes, this adventure, this hero's adventure of yours, of what you're on, is the most unselfish thing you could do by working on and with yourself. Because when you find those wonderful feelings, those wonderful things, the, the adventures that give you, ah, oh, they just pay you back in so much more than the effort you put in. People around you get to feel that. They get to be around you when you are full of joy, happiness. So that's a gift to them. So you're doing it for them, really. But so that guilt trip, you know, if you feel that, you know, to me, I think you know you're on the right path. Because we're going to acknowledge it. I, to me, I use that as a a marker, something to just review. Because it could well be that I've missed it. And maybe they're right. And I'm just going to review what they've said with a distance, say dissociated, just to to understand what's the intention of what they're saying. What is the facts we've talked about before when we, we take this criticism, but we don't look at what's truth behind those words. I can't remember what uh, episode that was. But hey, we go on. We carry on. Because you're learning. 
you're learning new things. And I think that that thing comes out even more from the people around you, you know, because they really get that that feeling that you are leaving them. Which you're not really, but you are in some ways. You're leaving them in that level of learning. But you're still there. And in fact, being that that more developed person, more, I don't like the word balanced, but you know, more, I don't know, more richer with the wonderful intentions that you, you start having for yourself. It just, you're still there for them. You see, my friend, my friend, <laughs> and why did I say that? But he's my friend, my son, Joseph. At the age of 18, he became a master hypnotist. And then he became a practitioner of NLP. Then he became a master practitioner of NLP. Then he became a trainer of NLP. I think at that time, he was one of the youngest trainers in the UK. And obviously, at that age, his friends were into different things. They were looking for their careers in, careers in a different, I would say, more recognised field. Because certainly hypnosis and Therapy at that age is not mo the most recognised field. In fact, bless him, he used to try to, to wear a suit to look a little bit older just to, to get it. And in the end, we just said to people, well, look, if you want to change, I can help you change. Got the experience. And he did. But the thing is, his friends, I don't know whether they, they consciously tried to hold him back, but he made sure that he was around them not necessarily the right times, but when he was there, he was with them. He didn't talk about what he was doing unless they asked. And in fact, a couple of them came on our trainings to become, one of them became a, a master practitioner. Now that's a real honor when you think you're, you know, you're on this path and your friends want to come with you because he left the door open, you see, and he showed them by example. And this is what I do. This is what I enjoy. And I respect what you enjoy. And now, after all those years, when he comes back to the UK to see his family, he sees his friends. And they're the same friends. And they love going out together. Because they come back at the level of friendship. And you see, sometimes even people say, you know, you're weird. And I think that used to upset me a little bit when people say, you know, you're a bit, bit weird. But then I heard about Austin, Texas. And it was like, keep Austin weird. I think it was the term. I'm, I might have butchered that a little bit. And I thought, yeah, but weird is special. Because it's different. And as long as there's a good difference and a good weirdness, then I know I'm on the right path. And so will you. You see, when people are like that, this tall poppy syndrome, holding you back, pulling you back, we can get, I don't know, we can get antsy about it. Um, I often get questions, you know, do I have to leave completely, let them go completely, the people who hold me back, who are constantly criticizing me? And sometimes you do for a period of time because that negativity will and can overweigh or overshadow what you're doing. And we don't want that if you're on the right path. But I think sometimes we can just look at that See, I like to look at things from a different perspective. And I like to look at it from an NLP perspective. And you see NLP, the presuppositions of NLP, which is useful assumptions. But one of them is people's behavior are not who they are. I'll say that again. A person's behavior is not who they are. It's just their behavior. And they're behaving in a way because every behavior, this is the second part of that, has a positive intention. And you might say, well, how can that be positive? Because they're trying to pull me back. They're not doing it for me. No, the intention is for them. You see, maybe they're frightened. Maybe behind this, they're frightened because they would love to do that too. But they're fearful. And they don't like that fear. So they try to bring you back to the fold. Maybe they, they really just don't want you to go. They don't want you to be different. They want you for themselves. So that's a positive intention of that. Maybe it helps curb their negative feelings. 
because maybe they're feeling guilty for not doing what they would really like to do. And by saying, you're weird, you're not special, who do you think you are? It'll never work. You're not that good. In some ways, it just makes them feel just a little bit happier. Now you can say, how can that make them feel a little bit happier? Maybe a bit more comfortable. But things like being addicted to drugs makes that person in the moment different. So the positive intention of taking drugs is in the short term, short term comfort. But the conflict is, as we know, long term doesn't do any good. Now, it could also be, and they're all sort of tied together, is in their mind. They're looking at how their life is, the things that they have done and haven't done. And maybe they're just thinking, I wish I could do that secretly. I wish I could. I wish I had. Maybe they missed their own opportunities. And instead of trying to feel that guilt, because no one likes to feel guilty, do they? They put pressure on you because it diverts that feeling maybe they wish they could do something similar not the same as you but then maybe they had something that they didn't step out and do they didn't take that responsibility they didn't make that choice and that could be something they're just frightened have anxiety of and by that way it just tries you know, their unconscious mind is alleviating it And you also don't know what beliefs they have. Maybe they were told they weren't good enough. And so if they compare themselves to you and they think they're not good enough, how can you be that good? You're breaking the mold. You're you're conflicting, as it were, with their inner core beliefs of not being good enough. And that's a weird thing to have, isn't it? And I, I just put it now is that that's... Their intention is positive for them. But maybe it's just as simple as they're just not ready to make the jump yet. They're not ready to make that move. They haven't seen their path. And I think by you being on your path, you're growing. And in that growth, you're able to show them. We always say, be the example of what you want to be, what you want to see in the world. I don't know if that was Mother Teresa or uh, Gandhi. I don't know which one it was. But maybe you could be the example of what can be done. You know, be the example of the person you want to see in your friends. And that can inspire them. Because maybe that will just be that counterexample of not being good enough. Because they're like you. And when they see you do something, it's like the four minute mile with Roger Bannister, when everyone thought their heads would explode if they ran under four minutes for a mile. He did it. And then within weeks, most top athletes were following his example because their belief, that negative belief that it couldn't be done was shattered. They had that counter example by someone doing it in front of them. So you could be that Roger Bannister of your little world. And by doing that, you're always leaving the door open. Door open that they can ask. As I know with with Joseph's friend, well, one of his friends, he came up to him and said, do you know what, Joe? I've got a, a personal problem. Can you help me? And that was like the ultimate trust, isn't it? To tell your friend something like that. And of course, Joe helped him. And then he then, I've seen this guy, suddenly change on his path, on his mission, as it were. And what a wonderful person he is. And he wasn't a wonderful, but he was a wonderful person before, but it was like seeing him start to express himself. So it's just leaving that door open. So that's what you can do. You see, when we come down to it, I think the thing we ought to think about is, you know, you're only responsible for you. I know you got you may have children and things and you say, oh, I'm responsible for them. No, you're a carer. They make their own choices. You can show them by example. But at the end of the day, the only person who's responsible for you is you. And that's you know, you're responsible for the choices you make. We've talked about that before, being at cause. 
And that's it. Now, when you get that, that intuition to follow your path, to follow your passion, and it doesn't have to be work related or anything. When you just get passionate about something and it's going to do good for you, good for the people around you, good for little old planet Earth, that little bit of ecology, then you know it's right. And you can bring people with you. Maybe you start to meet other people who are on that similar path and that energy grows because it's that important thing of realizing this is the most unselfish thing you could do. Because in some ways you are showing people the way you're shining that little bit of light. You know, maybe they've just got a little crack and you can shine this wonderful light of opportunity in that crack, which might just make the difference that makes a difference in their life. That's why I talk about sharing not only this podcast, obviously I want you to share this podcast, but sharing what you know. And you can share it by example. And when they ask, you can share how you did it. Or you can just celebrate the things that you're doing in a, in a wonderful way that, that shows people this is possible. And when people understand things that are possible, that's why, you know, for me, I look at things like YouTube and, and Instagram because I see people who are superb in their skills. And I also know I'm looking at their show reels, but I'm also, I also know that they spent a long time honing those skills. And now they're showing me what is possible. It takes effort, but it's good effort because every day we get just a little bit better when we do these things. So I'm grateful because that gives me a sense of gratefulness just to know that these people are around guiding me. And in that, I don't have to do everything that they did. I don't have to spend all the years of practice because they show me the one thing maybe that will aid my practice, but it took them 10 years to learn. And it's, I've done it in 20 minutes. Isn't that awesome? And you can do the same. So I think all of this is in some ways be, let me think about it. I think it, we should be grateful when we have this, let's call it resistance because we have our own resistances, don't we? I know um, resistance can be explained as anxiety and fear. And we have that in ourselves. We have our anxiety when we go on our hero's adventure. Of course we do, because it's unknown. We're coming out of our comfort zone, our familiar zone. But when we do, how much more do you learn? I can't put across how all the things I've learned and all the people I've met and all the inspirations I've had just by taking that first step into learning hypnosis for what God knows reason. I'm, it's not the best of reasons, but it's changed my life completely into a wonderful way. And I'm so grateful for that. And being a little bit weird in that respect makes me feel good. Because it, to me, it means I'm on that right path. I'm not just following everyone else. Yeah, I'm following a lot of people with NLP and hypnosis. And I'm trying to share that with you. And I hope I have. I hope there's a little bit in here that makes you go, if you're on your hero's adventure, your own, and I, I know you are because you're listening here, but maybe you've started. But if you're on it, let's get grateful that, yeah, I'm on the right way. I'm going to review it, obviously, because I've got all my skills to review where I am and where I'm going and what I want and all that stuff that we talk about here. But this is like the, not necessarily the trigger, but it's just that thing where you go, I must be on the right path because these things are normal. People are giving me these signs to say, you're different. I like to say special, <laughs> not, not special, special, you know, that type of special, but you're just special. You're unique and you're showing your uniqueness to the world because that's what you're bloody here for, isn't it? Show your uniqueness. We've talked about that before. I know people, oh, you're unique. Well, you bloody well are. And you can do and have what you want as long as you put the effort in and as long as it's ecological, good for you, good for the planet and good for everyone around you. And if you are just on this journey, this adventure, and you're getting those little qualms, and now you've got some tools to deal with them because there's hundreds of episodes here that'll help you 
I don't know, learn new ways to deal with criticism, deal with uh, your emotions, your states, the things that, that fire off anchors or, or what you're anchored to and firing off different emotions and you can change those. And all in all, you can then make, you know, we've only got one bloody life, haven't we? Well, maybe we've got more. Who knows? But if, if there was this thing that we do only have one life, then it's your responsibility to make the best of it, I believe. And if we can do that with self, selfless service and, and make a difference in the world and have joy, fun and gratitude and love, then a job well done, I think. We'll still have a few regrets, probably. But that's, as uh, someone said, you never regret not having done something. You always regret what you didn't do. So if you take that and say, okay, I'm on my path. I'm going to find out. I'm going to be curious and always keep that feeling of the wish fulfilled. What you want. So please do share this. Share this episode, if you would. And come with me on many more. Subscribe and all that stuff. There's always a subscribe or a follow button or something like that. So you get all these episodes following. And if there's anything you want, just let me know. If there's any topic or particular process you'd like, just send me that email, feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. Be part of this supported and supporting community. It might, be just, it might just be you and I. I know it isn't because I've seen the stats, but it could well be. As far as I'm concerned, it's just me and you. And I'm going to do whatever I can to help you get where you're destined to be and where you could be so grateful of a life well lived. There you go. Got a bit soppy there at the end, didn't we? Have more fun than you can stand because it's time to fly. Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.